Tell us a special memory you have from your time at Allegheny. Mine was actually when I was leaving Allegheny. Um, not what you might think. My college roommate and I were going to visit my parents in Buffalo for the weekend. And then we took a bus to Erie, and then we're going to go on the train. But it wasn't the New York Central, it was a nickel plate. And we got to the train station, which was one of these one-room train stations, and a train came and went. And we said, when does a train to Buffalo come? Well, that was the one that just went. So we, they hadn't announced it. So we had to call my parents, which was no cell phones, you know, we had to get a pay phone, and figure out when we could get on the New York Central, get to that station and meet them. And my father, who had not gone to college, looked at me that night when I finally got home and said, I sent you to college to learn and you missed a train. I think he was doubting his investment. So that was one of my memories. I, I can't come up with a specific thing. I, I, I think that the one thing that shocks people of the younger generation is when I tell them we had an 8 o'clock curfew. <laughs> I think the first six weeks of our freshman year. And, and, and actually, it was all freshman year. We, we, it got to 10 when we got to the sophomores. Oh, nice. <laughs> and we had to sign in and sign out of the dorm. I, I think that that shocks uh, the younger generation. I have trouble getting it down to one because I was an education major, but the professors who probably had the biggest impact on me with their course and how they spoke and how they taught and so on, were teaching other courses. And so Jay Lubas for some a couple of history courses, um, Dr. Seeley for an English course, and I think the one that probably impressed me the most was Julian Ross, who was Dean of Instruction, but also taught conflict, and everybody wanted to be able to take his course before you left. And when you went in there the first day in a big class of probably 50, 60 people for our generation, that was a big class, he'd get you to sign in and then you'd sit there for a few minutes, you could talk, and then he had, within that 10 minutes time, he had memorized everyone's name and where you were sitting. His mind was just unbelievable. And I was referring recently to the fact that I wrote a paper for him on the screw tape letters and you can't bluff, or you could not bluff, Dr. Ross. And I think I was trying to just you know, digesting and coming back with new material and thinking of was not my strong point. I was much better at memorizing and repeating it back. And he took the last page of this type of paper, wrote in hand, in pencil, a full page of tiny handwriting, questioning what I wrote on page 7, paragraph 4, versus what was on page 3, paragraph 5, etc., and all of these things. I mean, he just, I don't remember what my grade was. I passed, but he, it was just amazing, his mentality of how keen he was. And we were fortunate to have him. Hi, I majored in biology and chemistry. Uh, so those guys were all individuals. <laughs> Very much so. We had a biology teacher that uh, ran, had three kids and raised them all differently because he, uh, you know, one he was strict, one he was <laughs> permissive, one he was down the road, <laughs> because that's the kind of person he was. Um, but I uh, uh, took a lot of English classes, Frederick Seeley, I took just a bunch of his classes. He was, he was a good, good guy. Uh, but in chemistry, believe it or not, one of the one of my favorites was Dr. Reinsmith, who, whose daughter was my uh, sorority sister. But uh, it, it, we really weren't at that time. It was for organic chemistry. Everybody hated organic. I loved it. <laughs> what can you say? 